Hello. Today I shall be showing you how to put a computer together. But first, some important safety tips. What you need is a good, strong table. Something like this. This is perfectly adequate, can stand all the pounding that you can possibly do while you're doing this work. It can easily hold at least five or six pounds without collapsing. This is all you need. Now, you'll be messing around with sharp pieces of metal, heavy industrial equipment and electricity. Never a good combination, so it's best to be prepared. And what you need is a good first aid kit, something like this. Got everything in there you need for those minor cuts and abrasions you, that you invariably get when you're poking around the inside of a computer. It's got sticking plasters, and if that's not enough, there's a stitch kit, and should that fail you, there's even a bone saw, just in case. Right, and talking of bone saws, when it comes to home surgery, it's very important that you have a good supply of good household disinfectant handy. It stops those nasty germs like Ebola entering your body, you know, your, your fingers rot away and then drop off. Very, very important to have a good, good disinfectant handy. And talking about blood, bodily fluids, things like that. Another thing to have handy is a good supply of rags. Absolutely perfect for staunching that flow of blood. And should you just happen to get a puncture wound, then you can just stuff them in there and they'll possibly save your life while the ambulance arrives and takes you away and they do whatever ambulance people do. And even more to do with bodily fluids. A good intravenous kit is invaluable. You don't want to die waiting for the ambulance because you're just leaking blood and snot all over the floor. One of these things, they'll stop you, they'll replace plasma, and they'll stop you going into shock. Very, very important. Shock kills more more people than losing blood. As I mentioned before, you will be messing around ele with electricity. Now, electricity is dangerous stuff if not handled properly. And there's nothing worse than being burned alive in your own home. So, keep a fire extinguisher handy. Better still, keep, keep two of them handy. You never know, they may save your life. Right, that's about it for this section, and in the next one I'll be showing you some of the tools that you will be using later on while you build your own computer. Hello, in this part of the presentation I'll be going through some of the tools we need for building your own computer. Now some people will say all you need is a screwdriver. Ignore them. Tools are expensive, so I say if you've got them, use them. First up is the sizal. Absolutely wonderful piece of equipment. Cuts through wood, metal, masonry, bone. It doesn't care and neither should we. Another essential tool is the angle grinder. Absolutely perfect for taking off those rough edges. Sometimes a precise cut is needed, and this is why I recommend that you use a good old circular saw. Something like this 7-inch model would be fantastically useful. Next up on our survey of tools is a good set of wrenches. Either fix ones like these, set of adjustable ones like these for those odd sizes and for precise work a torque wrench. Now sometimes you may find that some of the computer parts won't go together properly. It's a very tight fit in which case a good solid hammer is essential. 
hand for that lighter touch, a good rubber mallet. Of course, that's not to say that we don't need our trusty screwdriver. Well, that concludes our survey of tools we need for this project. Next, we'll move on to the computer parts themselves. Hello. In this part of the presentation, I'll show you some of the parts you need to put together your own computer. This component is the main board. They come in three sizes. The large ones are called daddy boards, the small ones are called baby boards, and this is a mid-sized one called a motherboard. This part is called the spoo. One side is flat and the other side has lots of pins. Don't worry if you break one of the pins off. There's lots of them, so losing one won't make any difference. Some people call the spoo the lungs of a computer. This part is called a heat sink. I don't know why it's called a heat sink, because everyone knows that heat rises. This part is called the graphics card. I was going to show you an ATI NVIDIA 9300 GTX that can play Crisis at 950 frames per second. Unfortunately I can't because that card hasn't been invented yet. So this, this is a POS 2B that can barely play games like Solitaire or Minefield properly. This is a modem. It is used to connect a computer to the telephone system. Are we living in the dark ages or what? You may have noticed that the connectors on the graphics card are different to the ones on the modem. Well, this is a common problem and I will show you how to deal with this when we come to assemble the computer. This is a power supply. I find that after assembling my computers, not many of these work, so it's usually best to have two or three handy when building your own. This is a C-DROM. There are also DV-DROMs. They are used to play floppy disks. This is called a hard drive. They are called that because they are pretty solid. This is called RAM or computer memory. It comes in a variety of shapes and sizes but it doesn't matter which you choose as I will show you how to make any of them fit in your computer when we come to build this one. You will also need a variety of cables, nails, and bolts to join all of this equipment together. You will also need somewhere to put all these components. It is called a case. As you can see, I've gone for the classic black look from a company called LED. There are some other items you will need such as a keyboard, a mouse, eek, and a monitor. For some reason, computers do not do well without a monitor. They just seem to sit there and do nothing. Well, that concludes our tour around the components of a computer. All we've got to do now is put them together